Hello, and welcome to the Oracle of Light. I'm Shauna DeMellon. I'm a lifelong medium and certified life coach. And making the connection with the afterlife has brought me the greatest joy. Since losing my son, Jack, I have navigated grief, heartache, and despair. And it was through connecting with my son on the other side that my heart began to heal and I was able to find joy and meaning in my life again. Now, I'm inviting you into this space as I explore the afterlife, the grieving process, and rebuilding after loss. If you'd like to discover the spirit world and how to move through the loss of a loved one or child, you have come to the right place. This is the Oracle of Light. Hello, hello, hello. I'm so glad that you are joining me today. I am Shauna DeMellon, and we're going to switch things up a little bit in today's episode. I'm finding that lately, um, the majority of people that are coming into my practice are looking for ways to um, live their life after loss, create a life after loss. And so that is something that has always been near and dear to me. Um, as many of you know, I lost my son, Jack. He would have been 10 this year. And through that loss, it literally broke my heart wide open. And I know that sounds dramatic, but for those of you who have lost a child, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. And it wasn't only navigating the loss of my son, but it really was learning who I was in the process, like really figuring out who I was and what worked for me and, and really creating a whole new life for myself because I wasn't the same version of Shauna as I was before I lost Jack. And as many of you know, um, my uh, husband at the time and I, uh, we had begun in vitro. Uh, my beautiful daughter, uh, Emma, is 18 this year. And Jack was a part of our life for months, months and months and months. I would dream of him every night. Emma started asking about her big brother. How come my brother isn't in your tummy? What's happening? What's going on? And she saw him and I saw him and he was just part of our world. And um, my my husband at the time, he named him. He's like, I want to name him Jack. You see a boy? I said, oh, I see a boy. I see a boy. And then it just wasn't in the cards for us. Things just, things didn't work out. And it would take me years, years to even fully grieve Jack. I didn't understand. I thought I was doing something wrong. I mean, people were saying, well, you're just a me you're a medium. You you can just connect with him whenever. And it was like he was completely gone. And I've shared this story in other episodes. Um, it was a beautiful medium that I connected with, Laurel. And it was in that reading that I was able to see Jack again and experience him again. And it was just, it was so beautiful and life altering. And in the years after. I really started to look at my entire life. And now looking back, I can see that it was in learning to create with spirit that really helped me to become the person I am today. It really helped me to dig deep and let go of the people and the places and the opportunities and um, any of the hurt and the upset and, and, I've often said that my life is spirit led and by spirit led um, I don't mean in terms of, yeah, you guys decide for me, you tell me what to do. No, it's, it's, it's a collaboration really. Um, I invite spirit into my world every day, all the time. I'm constantly in, in communication with my spirit guides and my team and my angels, my loved ones on the other side, not because I can't do it on my own, but I, I look for guidance. I look for um, help with my blind spots because we all have blind spots. <laughs> yes, we do. And I often say, you know, it's, it's, it's so beautiful to be spirit led. It's the most important thing that, that I believe people often forget is that First and foremost, we are a spirit 
we are spirit in a human body. We are a spirit that is everlasting, that soul's journey never ends. We are eternal, that even when our time in this physical body is done, when we transition to the light to the other side, we will still be 100% alive in spirit because we will be pure energy. So the first way to start to create with spirit is by connecting with your spirit, connecting with the true authentic version of you. I often tell people, you know, there's two versions of me. There's um, the, <laughs> the mercurial earth girl, Shauna, who has bad hair days and gets frustrated and gets hurt who maybe forgets things sometimes, um, who can get frustrated. Um, I get grumpy if I haven't eaten. <laughs> I, If I haven't slept, I same thing. I just, I feel off. So there's this earth version of me who has struggle, who has worked through a difficult childhood, who has hurt and been hurt. There's that earth version of me. And that earth version of me, she also... She also sees the beauty in life. She gets really excited and she loves to share beautiful memories and, and experiences with people. And the people closest to her heart are very close and they're close for a reason. And she loves to laugh and enjoy life. And she's a ferocious reader. Like she's, I, I'm always reading like 10 books at a time. Um, it's like ADHD brain. <laughs> it's like, go, 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 go all the time, all the time, all the time. She also loves the stillness in the morning when she has her first sip of coffee. She loves the mountains. She loves the ocean. She loves holding hands with anyone. She just, I just, I love, I've always loved holding hands with people. I love watching people shine. So you see, there's this, this different version of me as the earth girl version. And then there is the other version of me that, you know, Joe Dispenza calls it your future self. Um, you know, it's, it's who you truly are. And I say future self because oftentimes we have these different layers, you know, Joe Dispenza calls it the avatar. We have these different versions of us that are not who we really are. So at some point in our life, and this is different for everyone, we will start to look at those versions, you know, these avatars, these identities, whatever they are. And they're all structured around belief systems, our belief systems and um, any of the traumas that we've had. And, you know, it's interesting because I always tell people that, you know, those first seven years that we are on the planet, that we, our brain is in theta, theta brain state, theta brain waves. And what that means is that we are literally a sponge, literally a sponge. So, we are picking up everything from around us, the good, the bad, the ugly. We are recording everything. So we could be recording outdated beliefs and ideals and limitations, criticisms, trauma, upset, abuse, you name it. Um, you know, in my private practice, I have I've read for um, thousands and thousands over the years. And I have I have bared witness to people who have have experienced tremendous tremendous loss and abuse and trauma and they are some of the sweetest people on the planet they really are and so again in those first seven years if you had a home environment that was loving and fun and and silly and you got excited for christmas and and halloween and birthdays and trips and if those first seven years were beautiful the majority of the time they were beautiful you had a loving home um you had beautiful friends then that will primarily be what shows up and now if the opposite was true again we can start to look back and not not from a place of blaming but from a place of just having the awareness understanding where these original seeds were planted and by seeds i mean beliefs so there's the earth version of you that has you know is a culmination of so many different aspects and, and parts. And then there is the true authentic you, the best version of you. And the best version of you focuses on love. The best version of you has forgiven. 
the best version of you understands that people are only showing up in a way that they can. They're only showing up as the best version of them based on what they've gone through and what they've experienced. And you don't hold any resentments. And you are always looking for the best in people. And you are choosing to show up as the best version of you every day, knowing that that's going to change, knowing that it's going to fluctuate and change based on what we have going on. But at the end of the day, you feel alive inside. You've connected with that, that true authentic self. You've, you've, you've connected with your spirit. And so the number one way to create with spirit is to acknowledge that you are a spirit first and foremost. And this is found a foundational piece in all of my teachings that when you connect with your spirit, you are connecting into the universal energies and what that means is that you're connecting into limitless possibilities, limitless possibilities. If you can think it, you can create it. If you can imagine something, you can bring it to light somehow, some way. And if that exact thing doesn't come to fruition, it just means that there's something even better. And so when you connect with your spirit, your life starts to change. You start to become spirit led. You're led by your spirit, your soul, your higher self, whatever you want to call it. For today's episode, we're going to refer to that aspect of us as our spirit. When you connect in with your spirit, you're connecting into who you really are. And I wonder what kind of world we would be living in if we showed up unapologetically us, if we showed up as you know, the true authentic versions of us didn't care. I was, um, I spent the day with my girlfriend, my, my girlfriend, um, Erin yesterday. She is, uh, she's just absolutely fantastic. I love her, adore her. And we went to watch, um, the, uh, uh, the Shaw classic golf tournament yesterday here in Calgary. Um, and for those of you who are, are just tuning in, I'm I'm in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So we are right above Montana, uh, right nestled into the the next to the Rocky Mountains. So we were at this this golf tournament yesterday, and it was pretty cool. It was pretty surreal to see some of these golf players. I mean, I've seen them on TV over the years. I've heard about them. They're 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 absolutely incredible, incredible. You know, when they were in their peak and their prime, these people were just absolutely amazing, and they still are. Um, and it was fascinating toward the end of our, our day, um, John Daly, he is quite the character, I have to say. Like he he wears funky, wild pants and um, he has this big beard. And he's got, you know, kind of spiky, cool hair and he does whatever he wants. He does whatever he wants. And he's lived an incredible life. He's a singer. He's been married and divorced, like, I think, four times. He's had all these different businesses. He's got, like, he just, he lives life to the fullest as, as him. He doesn't care what people think. And, and he came riding through and they were directing the cart. He was driving his own golf cart and they were directing his cart and he just ignored them, blew them off and drove around the way that he wanted to go. And he hit this, he hit this basically eagle shot right in front of us. And we were just kind of standing there going, what just happened? Like what? Wow. Like it was an incredible day. It was really fun to watch, but he was next level. And I, I reflected on that the rest of the night and we talked about it. And I said, you know, it is so refreshing and inspiring to watch someone when they show up as the best version of themselves. And they don't care. Don't care. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. And so I just, that is the invitation. The first point that I'm, I'm making for you in the ways to create with spirit is to connect with your spirit. What works for you? What lines you up? When you feel so aligned and lit up and excited, what is it that you're doing? What are your dreams? What are you working towards? What is that? What is the joy factor? What is the joy factor? That is something that I've been playing with lately as well. It's like, there's a part of me that I'd like more joy in my life. I've had, you know, as everyone has, I've gone through a pretty, pretty rough ride these last several years. And at the end of the day, what is it that really matters? 
what really matters is how much we loved, who we loved and who loved us, the experience that we experiences that we've had, the memories, the fur babies, the children, whatever it is, the partners traveling around the world, helping people, inspiring people, writing, being creative, whatever that is. At the end of the day, it really is about what lit you up, what brought you joy. And so my invitation for you is to really start to look at your joy factor. What is it that brings you joy? What is it that brings you joy? What is it that lights you up? That is a surefire way to connect with your spirit because your spirit is all about joy. Your spirit doesn't understand why we're frustrated and upset and whatever. Just change it. Move on. Go. (laughs) That's how easy it is. We get caught up in, oh, I don't know. And what about this? And I'm not sure. And all of that stuff. And that isn't to say that that isn't important. It's just, you know, I was having a discussion with someone earlier today about this, you know, about the ego. You know, what is the ego? What is the ego? And, you know, how can we start to differentiate our ego from our spirit, our true authentic self? Our ego is all about I, I, me, they. (laughs) Whereas when it's our true authentic self, it's there is a we, but it's a collective we. It's a it's a joyful we. It's a loving, inclusive, kind we. So there are different ways to look at that. And when you start to live a spirit-led life, again, it's not handing over the reins to a certain deity. It's not saying, you know, Jesus, take the wheel. Jesus, guide my life. Jesus, take over for me. It's, would you please come into my life? Whether it's Jesus, God, Buddha, Allah, angels, loved ones, spirit guides, benevolent beings, beings of light, whatever you call them, universal energies. We want to invite them in to co-create with us, to not take over for us, just to co-create with us. And now that's my second point. So number one is connecting with your spirit. And the easiest way to do that again is connecting into what brings you joy. Another way to do that is to journal. Anytime that you journal, you're accessing different aspects of your brain and your reality. And you can really start to connect into that bigger version of you, the spiritual version of you. And so number two, another way to create with spirit is to invite them in. You see, we have free will. So unless it's your time to transition, unless it isn't your time to transition, I said that wrong. If it's not your time to transition and there's a life-threatening experience, something happening, they will step in and help. But if it's not your turn, not your time to transition, then they're literally waiting in the wings to be invited in. Literally waiting in the wings to be invited in. And again, they're not here. They're, they're, we came here to live this life. We chose to incarnate. We chose to be here in this body. I've heard that earth, the earth, is. It, yeah, I've heard spiritual teachers refer to it as the earth school, that we're here to learn. And I believe that we are here to expand our soul. We're here to learn and love and experience and master the energy because everything is energy. And I don't know about you, but I would like to do that in the most happy, uplifting way that I can. You know, it's the day, the day that I'm recording this is um, August 21st, 2023. And so now moving into fall, my favorite time of year. Yeah. And then October and Halloween is my favorite. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm working on the events I've got coming up. I'm planning, you know, everyone's asking, are you doing a seance this year? I don't know yet. I'm moving. (laughs) So there's so many things about this time of year that light me up connected with fall you know this is a time of harvest we get to go through and figure out what we've what we've created in the year the last year in this last season and what do we want to what do we how do we want to finish this year I want to finish this year strong so we've got what September October November we've got four months how do we finish this year strong what if, what if these next four months were 
you know, the plot twist you've been waiting for. If they, if things start to take off for you, whatever you're, you're working on, whether it's work related um, with your family relationships, you want to travel, you want to experience new things. Maybe you're, you're hitting the gym, whatever that is, right? Like, what is it? Like we can accomplish, we can completely rewrite our entire life in these next four months. I'm not saying that's what you need to do, but it is, it's something that you could do. So invite your spirit guides in. You can invite your angels in. I've told this a million times. I'll, anytime I go out, I get in the car, I say, yo, angels, give me a parking spot as close to the front door as possible. Thank you. And then wherever I go, there's a parking spot. <laughs> so I invite them in because it's playful. It's fun. Um, angels, what can I do? What can I, what can I add to my life today that would bring me joy? angels, how much money can we make today? Angels, how much fun can I have today? I ask that every day. Angels, line up my week with fun. Angels, let's do this. And then when things start to show up, I say, thank you more, please. I asked that this morning. I said, hey, angels, line up front for me this weekend. And then, you know, I got a couple of messages from people to uh, inviting me out to uh, to different events and, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun weekend. So just it's inviting them in. And again, we have free will. So we have to ask them. They're literally waiting in the wings, literally waiting in the wings. So we have to ask them and invite them in. So figure out who is it that you're talking to. And this is something, if, if you need help with this, you, you just let me know, drop me a message. Um, I help people figure this out all the time because we have guardian angels, angels. We have an angel posse. Um, we have spirit guides. We have our crossover loved ones. We have benevolent beings, energies that we haven't met in this lifetime who are helping us on the other side. You see, we are, we are connected to universal energies. And as I mentioned earlier, they are limitless. Like the possibilities are truly limitless. It's magical. And so once you can get your head around that, then you can start to invite these energies in. And now I, I take it a step further and, you know, I want you to ensure that you are co-creating with um, energies from the light. That's what we'll say. I go into this a little bit more detail in my ebook. It's uh, I see love. I see dead people. And so can you, if you're interested in that, you can, uh, you can grab that. It's on, uh, it's on, it's available on Amazon because we want to create a nice sacred space. So if you need help with that, you let me know as well creating a sacred space, ensuring that we're inviting only those from the light to come in and assist us. It can be that easy. And then literally inviting them in. Angels. I talk to my angels. Angels. I call them guys. Angels, guys, yo, what's happening? <laughs> they don't care what you call them. They've never been in human form. So they don't have an ego. They don't sit there and think, hmm, she did not refer to me as Raphael today. She called me, yo, dude, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ignore her. I'm not going to listen to her today. No, they don't act like that. Um, angels are unconditional love. That's all they know. They haven't been in human form. There are archangels that have been in human form before. So they understand the duality. They understand what it's like to be in human form, to have an ego, to feel frustration, to feel upset. They understand exactly what we are experiencing. But for the most part, angels, angels have been in human form. So they don't understand. So loving, positive, uplifting, same thing with your spirit guides. You will have spirit guides for different, um, different things that you're working on. So when I'm writing on, you know, when I'm writing, when I have a new project, I have a different guide that comes in to help me with that. I really hate grammar. So I have a grammar guide. And then I was guided to an editor that could help me. <laughs> so they will help you when you invite them in just be excited. I have no expectations. Just be curious. I wonder what we're going to get. Let's go. And always know that every question that you ask will always, always, always be answered. Mm -hmm. I'll say it again. Every question that you ask of your guides, your angels, your loved ones, energies on the other side, those questions are always asked you may have a new person move into your world. You may listen to a podcast. You may hear a song. You may watch a video, see a TikTok. You may overhear something. Um, you may have a book show up in your world. I had two books pop up today. And I thought, oh, I need to look at those two books. So the universe is always communicating with us. It just depends on how open and available we are. 
Because if we're closed down, if we're angry, if we're in the lower emotions, if we're blaming, if we're judging, that just shuts off our ability to connect with and communicate with our, our guides on the other side. And most importantly, our spirit. So anytime you go into judgment, you just literally shut that off. So it's really important to just start to be aware. I think that is, that's, that's another invitation from today is just to be aware of what are you thinking? What are you feeling? And what are the dominant thoughts that you would like to have in your mind? Because our thoughts and our emotions are creating our reality. I think it was Joe Dispenza who described it brilliantly. He said, our intention, the thought we put out tells the universe what it is that we'd like. And it's our emotions that we feel about that, that will draw it to us. So if I want a new car, I put the thought out to the universe. Hey, I want a new Vespa. Let's go. Let's do this. Is a Vespa a car? I don't even know. Uh, I want a new um, BMW. How about that? Everyone knows what that is. I want a new BMW. I want a new Beamer. Let's do this. You put the thought out. And then the emotion of taking one for a test drive. What color are you going to get? Where are you going to go when you go pick it up? Oh my God, this is so exciting. They hand you the keys. Yes, this is mine. This is happening. The emotions are what bring it to us. And sometimes it can be instantaneous. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time because again, how open and available are you? Do you have a hidden fear that somebody's going to scratch it and hurt it? So then you're thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't get a new car because, you know, it's going to depreciate when I drive it off the lot. And, you know, I have to worry about where I'm going to park it. If someone's going to steal it, people are going to think I'm a, a pompous ass if I'm driving a Beamer. Hmm. Sometimes we get in our head about stuff and we're literally blocking the good stuff from coming in. So just a side note, just to be aware of what you're thinking. And you can have your angels help you with that. I'll say to my angels, can you give me a different perspective on this? What's right about this I'm not getting? <sighs> What's right about this I'm not getting? I call it staying in question. Because you see, when we stay in question, it's like leaving a doorway open for spirit to come in and help us. It's That's literally inviting them in. Whenever you ask a question, you're inviting them in. Oftentimes when we, when we ask a question that isn't going to bring us clarity about something that will help us, that's kind of when we can, we can spin our wheels. That's when our ego can kick in. That's when um, the fear can kick in. All these lower emotions can start to kick in. So again, staying in question is angels. What's right about this? I'm not getting what's right about me. I'm not getting angels. Is there a silver lining in this that I'm I'm not quite aware of yet? Angels, what does this look like for me? Angels, and just continue to invite them into your world. Or if it's spirit guides, your loved ones, ancestors, whatever that looks like for you. Universe, universe, that's another one I play with. Universe, line it up, let's go. I was just getting ready to move. And this all happened so quickly. I hadn't anticipated it. I was um, planning to stay in my current location for another year. And then I started seeing moving trucks everywhere. This is how things happen in my world. I kept seeing moving trucks. I saw probably 30 moving trucks and within a, about, you know, probably a span of five days. And I know for me, if it's really important, the universe, my angels will keep showing it to me. It'll keep coming up. Boom, 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 boom. It'll keep coming up. And I froze and I, I was sitting there at the lights and I saw another moving truck go by and I said, oh, damn, I'm moving. Oh, no, I don't want to move again. I'm supposed to stay here. <laughs> and then, yeah, sure enough, within days, I got the note, the message that, um, that yes, I, in fact, am moving again, which is kind of exciting. Kind of exciting. It's new, a uh, bit stressful and chaotic, but that's okay. I've invited my guides in. I said, bring me the means, the money, the time, the resources, the people to help me move and make it as stress-free as possible. I called the movers that day and said, I, you guys are swamped right now. The markets in Calgary are just insane right now. Um, rental and for people buying. And I said, I'm, I know you guys are probably insane. I'm moving at the end of this month, 31st. Do you, is there any way that you guys can help? And he said, uh, Dwayne, he's a my mover. He said, I have one spot left in the month and it's on the 31st. I said, what? So yes, everything's lining up. So that's what I do when I invite my guides in parking, movers, find me the right place. I said, I, I need, we need a place like this or better. Find me the right place with the right neighbors, the right location, um, the right pricing, 
uh, line up the dates perfectly. Um, it's quiet. It's beautiful. It's bright. I can have Maggie and Midnight, my cat and dog. Um, yeah. And there's space for my office. Like I just, I line it up. That's how I line it up and then invite them in. And I say, okay, show me, show me what I need to do. And then they kept flashing me rent faster. So in Calgary, in Canada, we have rentfaster.ca. So I went on rent faster, found the place, boom, there it is. It lined up. And, you know, as it lined up, it was, I had intense gratitude. So invite them in and watch them weave magic and be aware, depending on how your gifts work, be aware of what you're thinking of. What are the thoughts? What are you thinking of? What are, is it something that somebody says and you, it just kind of stops you in your tracks. That happens with me a lot. Somebody will say something and I'll freeze. I'll be like, Oh, just a minute. What was that? What did you just say? <laughs> I need to take notice. So number one is connect with your spirit. Number two, invite them in. And number three, this one, we've, we've briefly touched on this one, but this one is really cool. It's start to notice your patterns. This is really going to help you start to create with spirit when you start to notice your patterns. And by patterns, I mean, sometimes it can kind of feel like Groundhog Day, whether it's with, you know, your work or um, being accountable or, um, you know, getting to the gym or the way you eat or, you know, relationship stuff. We have patterns that show up. I can't remember who said this, but there was somebody who said to me, um, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you cut corners in one area of your life, guess what? You're cutting corners everywhere. It's fascinating when you look at it and not from a place of blaming and we're horrible and we're this or that. It's just, huh, interesting. Because when you start to notice your patterns around things that are not working out the way you would like them to, that's a game changer. That is a game changer. And the spirit world will help you to really start to notice the patterns. And then in our next step, we'll talk about how we can start to shift things. So when you start to notice a pattern, so let's say, um, let's just take relationships as an example. That's That's popped up a ton in my practice this last few weeks. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are tired of the dating scene. They're tired of online. They just want to find true love. And one of the patterns that, um, that popped in was this idea of it'll never happen for me. It'll never happen. It hasn't happened. Another relationship ended. I met this person, thought it was so great. And I've had several clients that have had this similar thing happening. And I always start to look at patterns. And I said, interesting. So this has happened to the last five people. This has happened with the last couple of people. This has happened with the last couple of years of dating for one person. And just by noticing the pattern, we can start to delve into what's really going on underneath that. Because if a pattern keeps repeating, A, it's something we're comfortable with, familiar with. There's a belief holding it in place. Those belief systems are really quite fascinating. So to create with spirit even more, I invite you to start to notice your patterns. Notice, notice the areas in your life that are not what you'd like them to be. And just start to notice them, not judging yourself, not throwing yourself under the bus, We've all done that. I've done that. But simply noticing, just notice, just, okay, I seem to keep doing this. What is that about? And I invite you to just, just start to be really curious and start to be really curious about it. It's almost like, you know, and I tell this to everybody, I carry, I'm always putting um, um, voice memos on my phone or I, I'm typing out messages to myself. Sometimes I'll have a pen and paper in my purse. I'm always getting like little downloads, little snippets of information, just little, little glimmers of, of hope that are coming through. I want to capture those. I want to figure out what that is and, and how it relates to my life. So really starting to become, really starting to witness yourself. It's really being willing to step back and this is vulnerable and really be 
really be willing to be honest with yourself about what's working in your life and what isn't. And start to notice. And this is just this, this is some home play. It's just to really start to notice what are your thoughts? Do you get angry? Do you blame people? And just by you starting to become really curious, spirit is going to come in and start helping you pull out any patterns, anything that isn't working, anything that you'd like to shift. And I had a client who said to me, she said, why the hell would I choose the family I chose? I said, oh, I know. Isn't that a great question? (laughs) And we do. Before we come into this incarnation, as a soul, a spirit, our essence, we decide what we'd like to learn in this lifetime, what we'd like to experience. Because you remember, Earth is a school. We're here to learn, evolve, grow our soul and our spirit. And so we think of what is it that I would like to learn and grow and experience in this lifetime? And then we find the family that will help help us to learn that. Sometimes it's quite painful. And sometimes it just depends. It depends on what it is that you came in to learn and figure out and, and master, if you will. So just becoming aware of everything. And there was a, a podcast with uh, Brene Brown. She was on Ted Fer- or um, Tim Ferriss's podcast. I don't recall the episode, but in the episode, she talks about the fact that at some point in everyone's life, there comes a time when the universe puts her hands on your shoulders, looks you in the eye, and she says, are you done screwing around? Are you done messing around? What are you doing? And it's in that moment, people think it's a light. People think it's a... Um, they think it's a, a a midlife crisis, but it isn't. It's like an unraveling. It's an unraveling of who we thought we were. It's an unraveling of our childhood, our, you know, at whatever age you are, if you're 40, it's unraveling the last 40 years. Anything that isn't you, that isn't truly who you are, so that you can be who you came to be. You can be unapologetically you. Like John Daly stomping around the golf course with these wild pants doesn't care just does whatever does whatever it's really quite fascinating to watch not in a mean way but just it was refreshing to watch everyone else just sort of kind of came through did their thing smiled and waved hit some amazing shots hit some not so great shots Mm -hmm. and then he came through and it was like whoa you know it just it was fascinating fascinating to watch so Four ways to create with spirit. Number one is connect with your spirit. Number two, invite the universe into your world, whether that's angels, God, Buddha, Allah, whatever that looks like. Three, begin to notice your patterns and take a look what's working in your life and what isn't. And knowing that what isn't working, we can change. And that brings me to point number four, ask the universe for the steps to create it the steps to start to shift things. I had a client who um, was saving for a down payment on a house. And she said, I just, it's, I'm not, I'm not saving enough. Like this isn't this for the type of house that I have my, my heart set on. I don't have the down payment. I don't know what to do. And the guidance that came through was pick up a part-time job. And she was, she didn't want to do that. She's an artist. So she does some pottery, beautiful, beautiful work. And she said, I don't want to do that. And so she had a belief that if she had to get a part-time job, that meant that she was not successful. She wasn't good at business. She couldn't do what she loved. No, it's just a way to make more money. So within like a year, maybe 13, 14 months, she um, had this part-time job that she actually loved. She worked with amazing people. She made more money than she'd ever made. And she bought her dream house. So the fourth way to create with spirit is to ask for the steps angels what is the first step i can take today towards this dream angels what is it that i can add to my life to make this a reality angels what is it that i can do to shift this pattern if you're seeing a pattern show up in your world what are the steps to create it what are the steps to choose it what is the what is the what is the first step that i can take today that'll take me, point me in the direction that will get me closer to the dream I have, whatever that dream is, what is the first step? And 
Is there a step that I'm not willing to take? <laughs> what is that? What is that? Is there a step I'm not willing to take? And show me, show me what I can do. Show me what that step is. Show me what, what works for me. You know, oftentimes, and, and I'm guilty of this, we find, we find people in our life that become our trusted advisors. And, uh, you know, I had a client years ago, he had been in a car accident. I think this was on the Thursday or Friday, he'd been in a car accident and he had reached out to me and I said, I, he, he was, he reached out and said, you know, can I book a session with you? And I said, well, my next availability is this date. So he waited until that next time, booked the session, hadn't done anything from the accident he was in. He was waiting to talk to me. And I said to him, I said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not your guru. I'm, I'm not the end all be all. I want to empower you. So if you're in an accident, you exchange information. You talk to your, um, your insurance company. You make sure everyone is safe. You check out the vehicles. You check out the other person's vehicle. You, you know, make sure everyone, you know, if, if, see if people are injured, do we, do you need to call the police? Do we need to call the ambulance? Right? Like, there's a list of 10 things that he he needed to do as soon as that happened, but he didn't because he was waiting to talk to me first. And it was fascinating because in that moment, I thought, how many of us do that? We're afraid to make the wrong choice. We're afraid to put ourselves out there. We're afraid to be rejected. We're afraid of no. We're afraid to lose what we have because what we have isn't that great, but something's better than nothing. Yeah. Ask for the steps to create it. So ask whenever something happens. Okay. Angels, guides, universe. All right. What do we need to do with this? Help me figure this out. What do I need to do? What is my first step? Okay. What's next? What's next? And again, depending on how your gifts work, sometimes we need to be in a meditation, quiet our mind, quiet room, and then we can have those conversations. And again, if you need any help with this, deciphering what your strongest gifts are, how they work, who you're talking to on the other side, you can book in, book in a session with me and we can totally chew through that and, and figure that out for you. And I've got some upcoming classes that, that might really help with that as well. Um, always, always, always reach out. The worst that someone can say if you ask them is no. Hey, do you want to do this? No. Okay. Hey, do, can you help me with this? No. Okay. Do you know who can? actually, yes, talk to this person, right? Like I'm always asking people questions. I'm always curious. I'm always, always wanting to explore more. And I'm, I'm the first person to get into the arena with any, any sort of personal growth. I'm kind of a nerd about it, to be honest. Um, but ask for the steps. And if you're not getting them in your waking hours, ask right before you go to sleep, angels, universe, I could, I'd really love your guidance overnight. I'd love to have the awareness of, of what it is. What is my next step? And keep asking because again, it will drop. Keep asking. You might have to ask it a thousand times and that's okay. Just keep asking. What am I going to do? How do I do? I, I kind of, I like to shift it into not so much why, why uh, sometimes why can keep us stuck Instead, I also like to ask, okay, what's right about this I'm not getting? Can you show me? Angels, yo, show me. Show me a different way. Show me, bring me, help me. Just can, again, inviting them in to create with me. And by asking for the steps, if you get a step, if you get a hit to do something, to reach out to somebody, to send an email, to call somebody, if you have, if it's really strong, you then act on it. Because if you don't, then you're going to miss that window of time. And not to say that you're going to mess anything up. It's just you, spirit's giving you a window of opportunity. I had this happen years ago. I had something that happened and, you know, life kind of went sideways. And I sat there and I was just, I was so overwhelmed and I didn't know what to do. And I sat with it and sat with it and sat with it. And then I got up one day and I thought, okay, what, oh, what do I do with this? I don't know what to do with this. And it was Bing, contact this person. Oh, and I contacted him and he was able to help me. So again, how open and available are you? How open and available are you? And 
If you're not as open and available, that's okay. That's something that we can shift. That chances are there could be a pattern, a belief system, a fear that we just need to shift and change so that if you choose it, your life can be spirit led. And it's beautiful because it helps you to clear away everything that isn't you. So you can show up as the best version of you and you can live a life that you absolutely love and create so many magical blessings, so many magical blessings. All right, my friends, I send each and every one of you mountains of love. I always love the feedback and I always love questions. If there's anything that you would love to hear about on the podcast, please, please drop me a line. Let me know. Um, you can find me on my website at livealifeyoulove.org. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Shauna DeMellon Medium, and you can find me on TikTok. I send you mountains of love. I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.